Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Welcome back. Um, so today, I think we will uh, finish the parts for the minimal spanning tree problems. Okay, so uh, let's uh, first have some review of our previous um, contents. Well, it's about the, first of all, we uh, defined a, a generic solution. We've, we first define what a minimal spanning tree is, right? So um, we, we were actually talking about a problem that we wish to find a minimal set of um, um, vertices and edges that form a tree, okay? And with that tree, we actually uh, connect all the, uh, um, all the vertices that are reachable in a graph, okay? So there's no, um, because it's a, it's a minimal weight, the, 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 the total weights of all the edges um, in that uh, tree is uh, minimized. So if we, uh, so there, and the number of uh, edges, the number of edges is also a fixed uh, quantity, which is uh, basically V minus one, okay? And, uh, uh, we, after the definition, right? So after we have defined a problem, we basically come up with a uh, general solution, <clears throat> which is like this, okay? So it's a very simple uh, outline of an algorithm, right? So we will basically want to grow a set of edges, <clears throat> right? And uh, that is the, uh, results we are looking for, but uh, we need to grow it from 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 basically from an empty set, right? So if that uh, set of edges is not that is not the final tree that we want, we will keep grow growing it by you know adding edges to it. But we have uh, a certain criteria uh, in selecting those edges, okay, and. Uh, the basically the, the the general rule is that we want that edge to be safe, okay. So, and we have come up with several um, operational definitions for what is a safe, right? But in order to uh, define the concept of safe, we need to first define the the cut, which is basically the partitioning of all the vertices, right? And <clears throat> we want to focus on all the edges that cross the cuts while also uh, uh, respect the current uh, set of A, okay? So among these uh, edges that cross the cut, we will select the one that has the, uh, you know, have the lightest weight or the smallest weight, which makes it a, a so-called light edge, okay? So we have proven that as long as we select the light edge, okay, along all the uh, edges uh, cross, crossing the cuts, we are able to grow a minimal spanning tree, okay, if we follow this uh, uh, general, uh, general algorithm, okay. Um, <clears throat> but since this is just a, a general solution, we will need to implement it with some specific uh, uh, logics, specific uh, uh, um, data structures. So we, uh, last time we introduced uh, the first one, which is the, the Crosco, the Crosco algorithm. Um, so in this algorithm, um, the final uh, set of edges, the final set A that we are growing is basically a, a forest uh, that consists of uh, uh, multiple disjoint sets, okay? And each disjoint sets, uh, you can think of it as a tree or just a set of, uh, set of vertices, right? But we will use the data structure disjoint sets, which um, makes the uh, um, algorithm looks like this, okay? So, and if we, uh, we have already actually compared it with the um, connected component algorithm uh, here, we, uh, that are 
uh, applied to a graph, right? But since these uh, connected components algorithm on the right, if we look at the um, difference between uh, the, 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 these two algorithms, we'll actually see that uh, they are pretty similar, right? And uh, it's, they all start with initial, initialization, uh, one initial, uh, an initialization that makes all the vertices uh, to be individual uh, you know, sets, right? And the next uh, bulk of code, the second for loop actually go through all the uh, edges in the graph and it will try to connect, um, it, it will examine the two, end, two ends of the edge. And if they don't belong to the same <clears throat> uh, set, set, then the algorithm will union, apply a union operation to, to, to merge or to combine the two sets. And the only difference here um, is that the cross goal algorithm needs to consider the weights Right, that's uh, where the the uh, the algorithm that that's actually the uh, the the nature of the algorithm. It needs to uh, take into consideration of the weights, and it tries to uh, minimize the total weight of the final tree. So that's why there's a weight as inputs, and more importantly here, it says the additional line of code is here. It will need to sort all the edges into non-decreasing order. So remember. We, we, we need to find a safe edge in each time uh, of the of the iteration here and how do we how do we uh, make sure that the edge that we select that we exam at the current point is the minimal is the safe edge so this line of code this line four actually uh, guarantees this because we already sort all the edges in a, in, a, in a increasing in a non-decreasing order so that we start with the, we start out with the, with the light edge, okay? So, um, <clears throat> and that's basically how the cross goes algorithm works. Um, and we also um, have gone through the, the time efficiency for the uh, MST cross goal algorithm, right? So by looking at the um, basic uh, operations, the basic set operations, right? We have uh, uh, make sets here, uh, a find set here, right? And a union set here, okay? So the algorithm depends on how uh, the implementation of the disjoint sets uh, how efficient are, are, are those are these in the implementation? So, um, generally speaking, we can give this rough estimation, which is uh, e times logarithm of v. Okay, so um, which makes it a, a pretty good uh, algorithm, right? We we just uh, it's it's kind of a kind of a sorting algorithm, right? Uh, but it's uh, it's uh, it's it's some with some additional operations after all the edges have been sorted, right? Okay, so that is the first algorithm. <clears throat> and in the next um, uh, couple of minutes, we're gonna go through the second type of implementation um, for the same problem, for the same minimal spanning tree problem, right? But it's uh, now this time we will use a different implementation, so we can compare it. We can actually compare the two algorithms. We can find that these two algorithms actually define the so-called safe edge, right? Define the so safe edge in a different way, right? and also the 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 tree being grown during the process is also um, uh, in a different data structure. Okay, so let's. Uh, let me pause the recording for now. Resume. All right. So, uh, Prim's algorithm. And it's just uh, another special case of uh, the generic MST uh, algorithm, right? But this time, uh, the difference is that we are now storing 
uh, all the edges being selected, uh, all the edges being grown, right? In a, in a single tree, but not in a forest, okay? So, uh, open the chats, okay? So, we will grow the tree from the roots vertex. And these roots can be an arbitrary root. Yeah, so because, um, you know, the, the, the problem, the MSD problem wants to uh, connect all the vertices in the tree. So it doesn't really matter which one you start, right? Uh, if we assume that all the vertices are reachable from each other, so we can start from anywhere basically. But from that vertex, we can always find a tree that span across the span across the, the, the graph. Okay, so this root can actually can actually be an arbitrary root. Okay, we will start from that root and grow the tree until the tree has span across all the vertices. So now it comes the key technique we will use. We will uh, store all the vertices that are not currently in the tree in the minimal priority queue, okay? So, at, at, so the, the tree at the beginning only have one root node, one, one root vertex, right? And all the other vertices that is outside the tree are stored in the minimal, prior, uh, minimal priority queue, okay? So uh, we have actually reviewed the minimal priority queue in the data, in the data structure uh, chapter, right? So this queue, um, data structure is similar to, um, it's based on the basic uh, two-ended queue, right? But now we uh, will as associate each element. So each element in the minimal priority queue is associated with a key score, okay? And the one that has the minimal score, the minimum key will have the highest property, uh, priority, right? That one will be uh, uh, dequeued first, right? It's not all about the, it's not just about the first in first out principle, but it's, it is really the priority score that we need to consider here, okay? So we assume that uh, it's based on the, the key attributes and the elements with the minimal key will, has, uh, will have the highest priority. So that means for each vertex in the graph, we need to assign it a key uh, attribute before, uh, um, in queuing them to the to the to the data structure to the minimum priority queue, okay. So uh, the key actually uh, has meanings, okay, has its own meaning. So for the vertex key, uh, uh, for each vertex v, the key value it actually is the minimum weight of any edge connecting v to a vertex in the tree, okay. So, um, so uh, it is the uh, minimal weight, okay? So it, it actually records the minimal weight. So it is something that we uh, need to update uh, because it uh, considers the, uh, any edge that connects the V to a vertex in a tree, okay? So it, the, the, the points that V connects to the tree can be different after the tree has been grown, right? So the, the, the tree is getting bigger and bigger. It spans uh, wider and wider in the in a graph. So uh, to a certain vertex, the distance from that vertex to that tree is actually dynamic. It's actually being updated all the time because the tree is being grown, right? So this key attributes needs to be updated as we can imagine at this point, okay? So, and of course, at the beginning, we will set the key to be in infinity uh, uh, because at this point, uh, the, um, there's no such an edge that connect it, connect it to the tree, okay? So um, yeah, let's further look at some details, okay? And also other than the key uh, attributes, we will have a, a pi attributes. And that is the, just a conventional uh, role for are a, a very a conventional attribute for, for remembering the, the parents' verdicts in the tree uh, because it is 
a HP structure that we need to um, memorize uh, where the parent node is and what are all the connecting uh, descendants or children nodes. Okay, so the algorithm actually maintains such a set. Okay, it's a set of edges from V to the parents of it. Okay, we can describe uh, each uh, edge in this set like this from the current vertex to its parents. Okay, and this current uh, 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 this current vertex actually belongs to the difference between the uh, so it's actually the the total vertex uh, subtract the root and subtracting the uh, minimum priority queue. Okay, so it is that um, all the edges that are not in the queue that are that are not uh, in the queue, right? Because at the beginning, all, all the vertices have been put into the queue. So we need to gradually pop uh, vertices vertices out and. Uh, uh, try to extract the edges that belongs to these sets. Okay, so let's look at the next property. So when the algorithm terminates, the queue is empty. So the minimum spanning tree uh, is just uh, can be represented by this way, right? We we exclude the the, the root uh, vertex because um, the the parents of the root will point to nowhere, right? So that's just a a way to make this definition a, a valid mathematical form. All right. So let's directly look at the, uh, the procedure. Okay. So it's defined uh, by this uh, MSD train procedure. A little bit different from um, the cross goals algorithm is that we need a third argument, which is the the root, right? But we, you know, we, we know that it is a it actually can be an arbitrary uh, vertex, right? So it really doesn't matter that uh, which vertex we choose, okay? And if we look at the first uh, parts, it's basically. Uh, these parts, right? Before the while loop, it is a for loop followed by some initialization code. So you can think of it as just a, a typical initialization, right? Because uh, at the beginning, the, the, the tree uh, is empty and we just uh, need to initialize the, the key values for all the vertices to infinity, right? And then, um, or the parents attributes also to a non-vector, to a, a, to a non-variable because there's no information at all at the beginning. And except for the, uh, the root key, except for the points, the, the vertex that we want to start with uh, grow in the tree. So that's why in line four, there is a uh, assignment of zero to the key of the root, okay? And more importantly is line five, okay? So we need to initialize our minimal priority queue by basically copying all the vertices in the graph to that queue, okay? So now that we are ready to start growing the tree, right? So all these blue parts, circle parts are just for initialization. Right? So this is a typical, uh, very typical uh, operation. And then for all the vertices in the minimal priority queue, uh, we will have that uh, if it's uh, um, um, parents vertex is not none, then we will have its key values to be like, uh, uh, to be a, a finite number, not infinity. Okay, so we will uh, uh, see this more clearly in a concrete example because at the beginning, all the vertices start out with uh, start out with uh, 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 with uh, infinity as uh, as its key values. All right, and um, the meaning of this key, as we said before, it is actually the the weight of a light edge. Okay, but that weight 
is a dynamic one. It needs to be uh, updated after each iteration because the tree has been grown and the, dist the relative distance from the remaining vertices to the tree is actually uh, uh, needs also actually also actually needs to be uh, updated. Okay. So the step of uh, identifying the safe edge is actually uh, conducted here with this line seven, okay? Because the minimus priority queue, uh, it is something that we know that uh, uh, it maintains uh, a, basically all the vertices in such an order that the elements with the uh, minimal key values will be extracted first, will be dequeued first, okay? So the relative orders are maintained. So that's why we can easily extract the main, uh, the, extract the, the element that has the, uh, uh, has the lightest, has the smallest uh, uh, key value. And because we know that the key value actually, uh, the, it, it's actually the weight of a light edge, okay? So we can, find the, the light edge by basically extracting the, the, the elements with the minimal, with the minimal uh, key values, okay? And this light edge, it actually connects the two parts of the resulting from the cut, okay? And one at one, in one partition, it is the minimal priority queue and the remaining part is the one that outside the minimal priority queue. So we, after that vertex is removed, right? We will need to add it to the to the uh, to the other partition, right? Which is that uh, which is the difference v minus q, right? And how do we do that? We simply need to um, adding this. So uh, we simply need to adding this edge uh, to the set A. But uh, this, basically speaking, this set of A is nothing uh, concrete in this algorithm. So it is just a conceptual, uh, it's just, it just exists in our concepts, okay? It is not some uh, data structure that we uh, defined in the code, but rather we actually define the, the queue that is something concrete and everything else outside the queue, actually they form a, uh, a the so-called, uh, uh, con conceptual variable A. Okay, so I think this is also a uh, a huge difference between the Prim's algorithm with the uh, with the cross goals and with the you know with the cross goals algorithm. All right. So the next uh, key step is from line eight to eleven. So because uh, it's easy to uh, extract elements, oops, to extract elements from the minimal priority queue, but that will um, come with some uh, uh, outcome that we need to take care of because uh, first of all, there are some elements gone, right? And we need to, oh, and, and that means the edges from that, uh, elements, which is just extracted. If we look at the edge from that, uh, from that um, um, vertex to its parents, that edge will, is actually the new edge that's formed to the, that's added to the tree. Okay, so which means the tree is been, the, has been grown with one more edge. So we need to update the keys, uh, for all the vertices that is adjacent to the uh, to the to the vertex u, right? Because now u is a different one. U is outside the queue, right? So we need to consider all the vertices that are used to that have been used to connect to to u, right? We need to update their key values because the tree is uh, increased and the distance are the distance from all the vertices to that tree is also uh, updated. Okay, so we will need to use this line of code uh, to examine all the adjacent vertices uh, of U, right? And we basically examine if that uh, vertex 
is already in the queue. And if that weight of at the edge, so if the, uh, the weight of the edge from U to V is smaller than the key, right? Which means that light, that edge needs to be updated, right? We will need to reset the parents of V to U, okay? And then also reset the key values to a smaller number, okay? So this would only happen when the weights of from U to V is smaller than its old uh, key values, okay? Which means we find a shorter edge. We find a even lighter light edge for V, okay? So the previous uh, weight, the previous key value is, is no longer valid, okay? So that is, uh, uh, not so much for the Grimm's algorithm. And uh, let's uh, start with an example of this. Okay. All right. Uh, let's look at this one. We have um, letters in the vertex and the numbers actually indicate the, the weights. Okay. Let's assume that we uh, run the Prim's algorithm starting from this vertex A, okay? And all the uh, other parameters are passed in, right? So uh, we will uh, skip the, how the initialization code is run, right? We will basically know that all the vertices uh, are now in the uh, minimal priority queue, right? Because of this line of code. So we maintain that all the vertices that are outside the tree are actually currently in the in the minimal priority queue, right? And A is the 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 root, so we have it in bold, right? And the specialty with A is that it is the only element in the queue that has a zero key, and for all the other keys. Uh, uh, all the other vertices, the keys will be infinity. So that also determines that A will be the one being dequeued because it has the highest priority, okay? So that's our queue, how our queue look like. We have uh, this table representing the queue. We have the elements, the vertices in the first row and the key values as the second row, okay? All right, so next we're gonna go through some iterations of the of the uh, remaining algorithms. Okay, so let's assume that so let's paint all the vertices that have been popped out that have been dequeued from the minimum priority queue into a different color into a black color. Okay, so now A is uh, dequeued, so it is now in black, and what we need to do according to the algorithm is to go through all the adjacent vertices for A, which in this case include um, B and H, right? B and H. So, and what we're gonna do in each iteration for that in that for loop is that we will uh, first exam whether um, the vertex is in Q, right? And also whether the weight from U to V is smaller than the old value of V, okay? So for B, of course, it's already, it's still in the queue, right? And also the value here for is smaller than the key value because the key is in infinity, right? The key is in, uh, initialized to infinity. And for H, it's also the same thing. We need to uh, update the key of H to some to this new weight, which is from A to H, right? And also we will update the parent attributes for each adjacent vertex to U, okay? And in this case, the uh, parents of B and H are all set to be A, okay? So that is the first iteration, right? And then after that, if we look at the minimum priority Q, it will be different now, all right? So the next, we have, oops, we have two 
finite values for the keys for the two vertices from uh, uh, including B and H. So the next one being popped out, not being dequeued, would be this vertex B. Right? So in the second iteration, the B will be dequeued. And the same uh, examination steps will be conducted, which is to examine um, all the adjacent vertices for B. Right? A little bit different, a little bit special place is that this time, uh, if we look at the adjacent list of B, it's include it's actually include A and H and C, right? But since A is not is already outside the queue, so nothing needs to be do nothing need to be done with A, and then we will only look at the H and C. Okay, so it's a little bit tricky now. Let's look at the steps. Okay, so now since A is already the, the pi uh, relationship between A and B are already fixed. So we will mark this edge uh, to be uh, uh, to be in a, in a shaded color, right? All right, so when we examine the adjacency list of B, assume that we start with C. And of course, since C, the old value for C is in affinity, right? And the pi, uh, and it's also within the queue. So the parents of C will be updated to B and the key values will also be updated with this new weight, right? From infinity to eight. So that's, uh, uh, that is the correct uh, step, right? Oops. And then, but nothing else needs to be updated because if you look at the, Second, the, the, the this element H, right? The edge between B and H is 11. It is, it is 11, right? But since this 11 is greater than the old value for the H, which is, has a smaller weight, eight. So the key does not need to be updated. The key for H doesn't need to be updated, okay? So there's only one element C updated, but not for H. So that mean another meaning for it is that um, another interpre uh, interpretation is that uh, for this uh, for the key of H is that the weight eight means that the distance between the um, um, the vertex H to the tree is actually from H to A, but not from H to B because this H to A is shorter, okay? So that also means we, when we selecting, when we want to select the next uh, light edge, then we, we shouldn't select B to H, but we should use A to H because A to H has a, has a lighter weight. It is actually the light edge, but not from B to H. All right. So uh, that's the second iteration. And after the second iteration, we will have a, basically a tie, uh, which is C and H have the having the both having the same value. But th that's uh, not a uh, uh, not a, a a big issue. We can just. Uh, uh, keep dequeuing elements uh, as the elements, uh, as the algorithm runs, all right? So we assume that C will be the next one, but we will see that actually when, if H is the next one being updated, it's all, uh, being uh, dequeued is also will lead to the same, uh, will lead to the uh, incorrect answer, okay? Um, yeah, let's uh, follow, assume that we uh, let C to be the one, to be the next one uh, dequeued. Right, so after C is dequeued, and then it's adjacency, uh, adjacent to what is this, including B, D, F, and I will be examined, right? And uh, in this case, we actually update a lot of, uh, actually updated three elements uh, because uh, first we need to uh, cross out the B, right? It doesn't need to be updated because uh, it is, uh, it is, 
it is outside the, the queue, right? So this condition doesn't satisfy. So we need to update the B and F and I, and all their previous key values are in infinity. So they will be updated to the corresponding weights, right? Which is um, seven, four, and two, right? Into this, into this uh, uh, minimum priority queue, all right? So the next one, as you can see now, is the vertex i being uh, updated, uh, being uh, dequeued, right? So the its adjacency including g and h and c, right? So now, as you can see, the edge from h to i is seven, which is smaller than the previous value, right? So the key for h now needs to be updated, right? Because when i is included in the tree, the distance from h, the shortest distance, well, I will not use, say the, the use the term short distance, but it's actually the light edge from h to the tree is actually this one from h to i, but not from h to a because it has a lower weight, right? So we need to update to, uh, to seven. And for G, it's updated from infinity to six, right? So that's how we update the uh, queues. All right. So for the next uh, couple of steps, I'm gonna go through it uh, more quickly, right? Uh, right, so the F will be the next one being uh, extracted because it has the lowest weights. All uh, right, and its adjacency lists will be examined, and Q will be updated, and then G will be the one extracted. Right after G is extracted, the weight, the key for H is updated again. So the H will be the next one uh, extracted. Right, and when the neighbor, when adjacency list of H is being examined, we find that all these three adjacency. Uh, uh, adjacency uh, vertices uh, are already outside the, the queue. So actually it's, uh, it needs to include the A, right? Right, we have uh, A, I, N, G, and B, right? So it's actually a lot of, lot of uh, other uh, uh, vertices here, right? So the D, E is the only thing, only vertices left. Right, and the D will be got out first, and the E will be the last one being extracted. All right, so at this step, we are done with the minimal, uh, with the uh, Prim's algorithm, right? All the vertices in that minimal priority queue uh, have been uh, extracted. And if we, uh, because we start with A, so let's use A as the uh, root of the tree and we uh, lift up all the vertices, it will be a tree like, like this. And all the relationships, all the shaded edges are actually indicated by the, the, the pi attributes for within each uh, vertex, right? So that's all we can get uh, from running this algorithm. All right, so, <clears throat> Uh, it's clearly some differences uh, can be seen uh, compared to the to the Carrasco's algorithm. So first of all, um, we don't uh, we we utilize we utilize some um, uh, data structure minimal priority queue to maintain uh, to 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 help us quickly find the. Uh, find the minimal minimal edge, right? The, 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 to quickly find the light edge, right? We want to find the edge that has the lowest uh, uh, the lowest uh, weight uh, connecting uh, to the current trees, right? Which means we don't need to uh, sort all the edges, right? And we didn't use uh, a disjoint set, right? Because now um, the the tree that we are growing is not uh, from a collection of uh, is is not a collection of trees. It's not 
a forest, but rather it uh, uh, starts from a roots and we, we gradually uh, add edges to that, uh, to that root, connect, uh, connect vertices to that root vertex. Uh, I think that is the main difference from the Prim's algorithm to the Crossbow's one. All right. Okay, so next when we analyze the running time for Prim's algorithm, uh, we know that it's basically uh, the minimal priority queue that we need to pay more, uh, need to analyze more carefully about, right? We know the uh, minimal priority queue can be uh, implemented with a minimal heap, right? So it's like, it's a, it's a heap structure and the, the root one, the root node has the, uh, has the smallest, uh, has the smallest key value, right? But after that root is, uh, is popped out, we need to run some uh, maintaining procedure like uh, minimal heapify, minimal heapify, something like that, right? So, um, and for, um, if we, minimal, if we implement a queue with a minimal heap, then we can uh, estimate the running time for the extract minimal operation. Uh, basically it takes uh, the logarithm of V times, right? And now since there's V iterations in a while loop, because we need to go through all the vertices once, okay? So the total time for calls for the calls of extract minimal operation at line seven, this operation alone will take almost V times logarithm of V, okay? And the next tricky part is the for loop within the while loop, okay? But actually that's something we have uh, been gone through several times already, right? So it is that for each vertex being extracted, we need to examine the minimal, not minimal, we need to examine its adjacency list once, right? And for each vertex being extracted, we need to do that once. And all the vertices in the graph will be examined, exact, will be extracted exactly once, right? So that means all the edges within the graph have been gone through for once. So the body of code from line eight to 11 ex actually will be executed for big O of E times in total, right? That's a con grand consideration. That's a grand total will be uh, bounded by big O of E, okay? So, uh, but that, if we say that it's just a big O of E, then we actually made a mistake because uh, in the line 11 here, we update the key, right? We update the key for V and V is something that's still in the minimal priority queue, right? So that makes an implicit call to the minimal heapify operation, right? Because once we have, it's, if, it's a, if it's a minimal heap, right? looks like this, when we change the, any key value, for example, of the elements here, we always need to maintain a minimal heap property of it because we don't know if this update key value will break the minimal priority key property, right? So that's why we need to implicitly call the minimal part, minimal heapify operation each time we have updated key values for it, right? So uh, that's something we need to keep in mind. So this minimal, minimal heapify operation actually runs in big O of logarithm V time, right? So taking that into consideration, um, we actually need to uh, include this one, right? The number of iterations is E times the logarithm of V, right? And altogether, that is the uh, total, uh, total uh, um, running time efficiency can also be expressed by this big O of E times logarithm of E, right? So which actually 
uh, is not that different from the one uh, from the Kraskow's algorithm, right? So for the Kraskow's algorithm, uh, because we have iterated over all the edges in a non-decreasing order, right? And which means the number of iterations is also E. And within each uh, iteration, we need to call the union function or we need to call the find set function. So that'll mix the logarithm of V operation as well. So uh, in theory, these two algorithms are pretty much similar uh, in terms of uh, running time efficiency, okay? So, uh, but still we have some improvements, some space for improvements for, uh, for this uh, Prims algorithm because uh, here our analysis assumes that we use the minimal heap data structure to implement the queue. And actually uh, we can uh, use a, uh, a more advanced algorithm uh, which is not required uh, to understand here, but it's a more efficient algorithm than, than minimal heap, uh, which is called a Fibonacci heap, uh, which runs faster in terms of heap maintaining uh, operations. Okay, so that makes uh, uh, the Prince algorithm sometimes a more favorable algorithm as compared to the cross goals one. All right, so. Let's uh, summarize by comparing the two algorithms uh, here again. Uh, the two algorithms, Crasco and Prims, they uh, use different rules to determine a safe edge, right? So remember in the Crasco's algorithm, we basically sort all the edges in a non-decreasing order so that we are starting out from the smallest one, right? Uh, and for the Prims algorithm, we use the minimal priority queue to maintain uh, the key values of all the, all the uh, uh, vertices outside the tree, right? But each time after the key is updated, we need to run, we need to maintain a minimal priority queue operation. So that are the difference in uh, determining a safe edge for the two algorithms, okay? And the mechanisms of how tree is constructed, how the minimal tree, minimal spanning tree is constructed is also different. So the, in the cross goals algorithm, we use disjoint sets to represent like the smaller set of, uh, smaller set, small set of vertices, which you can think of it as individual trees. So the set is starts from a, starts with a forest and the, the smaller trees get merged, right? As the algorithm run, and uh, there will be only one tree left after the algorithm is uh, uh, determined. And the Prim's algorithm, um, in that in the Prim's in the Prim's algorithm, the tree starts out with uh, just a one root uh, elements, and all the other safe edges are gradually added to the tree, and uh, that uh, that is a different. Uh, uh, process as the cross goals algorithm. All right. So as we said, the prime algorithm uh, can actually be faster if we uh, uh, implement the minimal priority queue in a more efficient way, right? Which makes it a little advantage over, uh, over the cross goals algorithm. All right. So that's uh, so much for the, uh, for the algorithm. Uh, for the for the minimal spanning tree problem, as the uh, first parts of the advanced uh, graph algorithms, uh, I think you all have a pretty good experience with it now uh, because we uh, have some exposure to how the weights of the edges are actually considered and how the weights are utilized. Uh, to determine the, to, to evaluate the results of the, uh, of the, uh, of the algorithm, right? Within each, also within the running steps of the, of, uh, for within the, each running step of the algorithm, with the, the, the weights of the graph uh, edges is a, is a key factor now. So I think I'm gonna, uh, stop recording for now, but I know we, we can spend some time for the next uh, chapter for the shortest path problem as well. All right, let me stop recording.